In today's video, we're going to show you step by step how to change the oil from home in your BMW G20 330i. Hey, this is Brian, and in today's video, we're going to show you step by step how to change the oil in your 2019 and newer G20 BMW 330i. So behind me, we have Zach's car all set up on the lift. Now, for this process, you do not need a lift, but you are going to need to get under the car, so you can use a lift, a jack and jack stance, or race rams. Now, let's take a look at the products you need and also the tools. As far as the oil is concerned, we are going to be using Liquid Molly Top Tech 6600. As you can see, it is a zero W20, and if you take a really close look, you will see that it is BMW Long Life 17 FE approved, which is the required oil spec for the modern day BMWs. As far as oil capacity is concerned, you're going to need 5.5 quarts. These are just under, so you're going to need to get a small bottle as well. But don't worry, because if you click the link in the description, we have oil change kits that include the filter, and you can even option in Ceratec, which we're going to be adding today, which is going to internally ceramic coat your engine for better wear protection. Then lastly, you're going to need your oil filter, and also some new gaskets and a new crush washer. And then for the tools, let's talk about that. So we are going to be using our nice little handy dandy wear kit. This is going to give us everything that we need. We're gonna go through that as we start to work on the car. You're going to need a pick tool to remove some of these O-rings over here. Then what I would recommend is having a 3 8 to a half inch adapter because as you're going to see in just a moment, you're going to need a pretty large socket. You're going to need a 27 millimeter or if you don't have that, a more standard size is a one inch and one sixteenth socket. So whether you have the metric or the standard, grab those and you'll be good to go. Then last but not least, you're going to need your torque wrench that can do 25 Newton meters. So with that, let's get started. First part of the process is to pop the hood. If you haven't popped your hood in your BMW, it is a double latch system. Pull it twice and then you can lift up on the hood. Next, you're going to remove the engine cover. It's held on with these little rubber grommets. So just go around each corner, pop it up. I'll show you what they look like. So as you can see, they pretty much put one in each corner. Just make sure you go one corner at a time. Don't ever just grab one side and rip because they'll break them all. Next, what we're going to do is clean off this area on top of where oil fill is and then you're going to twist it and then I'm just going to leave it like that and what that's going to do is that is going to vent the system so the oil flows out nice and smooth. With that done let's put the car up in the air. All right underneath the car you're going to find this plastic thing so what you do is you pull down and you twist it counterclockwise and then that is going to expose the drain plug. So what I love about this ratchet, it goes one way and it's significantly stronger because it has, doesn't have one of those little flippers. You push it, you flip it, boom. And that's how you tighten it. Isn't that cool? Anyway, it's a 17. Pop that on there. Now, if you're new to changing your oil, the trick is to press it up. Just not too crazy, but press it up as you do it. And then once you get to a point, you cannot spill a drop of oil. I just spilled oil on Zach's shoe. <laughs> you lied. I'm, no, I said once you get good, I, I didn't say I was good. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out our crush washer. So I'm just gonna dry this off. Um, so included in the kit, you do get a new crush washer. So take that off there, pop that back on. And then once that is done draining, we are going to reinstall the drain plug and we're going to torque it down to 25 newton meters it's like uh when you wake up in the morning and... <laughs> 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 i've never seen that before so once the dual reservoirs are drained <laughs> now it's that large clump of metal it's going around it oh, okay cool so then once it's stopped draining Snug it up by hand, and then we'll torque it to 25 newton meters. Okay, good to go. And I'm just going to wipe that off. Then you can take this little plastic piece here, and then it's gonna snap into place just like that. Then at this point, we are done with everything under the car, so we're gonna put it back down on the ground. So now that all of the oil is drained, it is time to change out the filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this little cable system out of the way. So what you're gonna do is just 
press forward on these little tabs and this is gonna lift up. And then you can just kind of tuck that away and it's gonna give you better access to the oil filter cap over here. So again, I got my socket on there. And they are a little bit snugged up. So once I break it loose, I like to just take a towel or two and just stick it down there just to make sure we're not dripping any extra oil. Okay, then once you get it loose, you just grab a towel, lift it up just like that. And then to get it separated, you just kind of give it a yank and it's gonna pull right off. Okay, so now that we've done that, what you're going to do is take your new O-ring here and we're gonna swap it out. Swap out the old one. Now make sure that you put it in the right groove. If you look right here, you'll see this nice wide groove and that is exactly where this is going to go. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dab of fresh oil on it just to make sure that everything is properly lubricated. Okay, and we'll put this back on there like that. And then you can take your filter and just pop it on like so. Now, when we go to install this part, you will see that there's this little nub piece and you have to make sure that you line that up correctly, otherwise it's never gonna go in. So let's go do it now. So when you do this, the hole is on this side over here, so make sure that's over there. And you can get that down. Make sure you don't get your rag stuff in here. And then you will be able Twist this down. Then you can tighten it down to 25 newton meters. Then just reach down here, just make sure you didn't spill any oil. Looks pretty good. And then you can clip this back in over here. Now that the filter is all situated, it is time to add 5.5 quarts of oil. I always like to pour everything into an external canister before pouring it into the car, but you're welcome to pour it directly in if that's what you prefer. So we need to fill it up to about right there. Now the oil that we are using today is exactly the same thing as what's in our kits in the smaller containers. However, as you can imagine, we go through an insane amount of oil, so we like to get these nice big jugs. All right, so now that we have our oil, we are going to add Ceratec, which is going to essentially ceramic coat the inside of the engine to prevent wear and make sure this engine lasts as long as possible and performs at its best. Um, this is something that we certainly run in all of our cars and I actually don't like doing oil changes without it. Took a protein shake for your car. Now, if you are using one of these containers, here's a little tip. You put your finger over, then you line it up, and then you move your finger. And that may sound very basic, but it's gonna prevent you from spilling oil all over the top of your engine. Then take your oil cap, put it on, twist it. It's not even 45 degrees and it'll click into place. And then we can get our engine cover, throw that back on. What I like to do is just line up basically where the oil fill is and that'll get you where you need to go. And at this part of the process, everything is physically done. We just need to reset the computer inside the car. All right, so once you're inside the car, you need to put it in diagnostic mode. To do that, you quickly press the start stop button three times. Just like that, the screen's gonna light up and then it'll tell you that it's in diagnostic mode. There you go, diagnostic mode active. Then what you're gonna do is press and hold the BC button over here, just like that. And then after a couple seconds, you are going to see a screen. So you see we have brake fluid. If you press it again, we have engine oil, we have vehicle check, you have brake fluid, also a um, couple other things. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go to engine oil, and then you are going to press and hold again. So just keep pressing, it takes uh, 10 seconds or so, sometimes 15. And then let go once it says reset and then press and hold again. Then it'll say reset in progress. And then after a couple seconds, it'll say successful. Now, when you go back in, so I'm just gonna press and hold the BC button for another you know, 15 seconds or so. It's gonna give us the new service interval and then we can see that it has been fully reset. Okay, so there's brake fluid, 
engine oil. So it said, I think it said 3,500 before. Um, now it says 9,000. Now, typically here, we change our car's oil uh, roughly five, 6,000 miles or so. Um, if you are tuned, you wanna make sure that you're changing it more frequently. I don't really feel comfortable with 9,000 miles, even though the Liquid Molly will certainly take you there with no problem. I guess I'm a little bit old school and like to make sure I have it changed more frequently. Now, if you go to reset your oil light or one of your other lights and it doesn't work, one of the most common issues is, actually it's kind of funny because it's when your clock isn't set because it uses the clock to calculate the dates and the times and whatnot for when you should have your oil changed. And if you don't have your clock set, it'll fail every time. It's kind of a strange thing, but hey, that's BMW. So as you just saw, changing the oil on a G20 BMW 330i is very easy and you can save a lot of money by doing it at home. If you're interested in any of the parts or tools we use in today's video, be sure to see the links down in the description. Once again, my name is Brian and Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe. Check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.